G'day and welcome to my channel. Today we are having a look at the NanoX fermenter from Cheeky Peak. I'll just start by saying that this unit was supplied to me by Cheeky Peak, but these are all my words, totally independent review as per usual. Now let's get it out of the box. So that's it for box one. It's the basic unit with the lid. Uh, it does come with four feet, adjustable feet. This is extras, this isn't in the base unit. It comes with a jacket. We might go through this again at the end. Uh, and that's the pressure lid. Awesome, I wasn't sure if they'd send me the pressure lid, but they have. And there's quite a bit of weight in that too. That's, that's heavy duty. It's got a racking arm. Okay, that will be up there for blow off tube. And that is a thermo well. A valve and this is a heap of like end clamp end caps and tri clamps tri clamps eight one and a half inch and I've got a three inch port and that's a two inch tri clamp that'll be a three inch tri clamp and all my seals so there you go there's all Try clamps I got and a valve and seals and that is you know a sample port which actually is really handy the pressure lid and a see-through port with a tap <laughs> wow I've got a lot of bits and pieces here what I'm going to do first is set it up as the bucket fermenter the standard model and then we'll set it up as the pressure kit. And before I do that, you can already see how many different ports it's got. It's, there is ports all over it. And that just means there's a lot of different things you can do, customization, however you wanna set it up. There's only one at the top, but that's all you need when you're not using pressure. You could even set it up with a bung and a regular airlock, but this is set up with an overflow tube. You have to buy the tube separately, but I'm sure you've got some of that hanging around your brewery. Most of these ports, when you're using it as a bucket fermenter, will just be closed off. There's no real need for them. So to have a look at the ports, there's a one and a half inch port at the bottom. So one and a half inch port there, one and a half, one and a half, and a two inch port there. There's plenty of ports. That's enough ports to do whatever you want to. Highly customizable. First thing I'll put in is the thermo well. With the basic bucket model, these two ports are usually just closed off unless you want to customize it with something else. There is a tip with triclovers that you never quite see people say when they're setting up, and that's to fully unwind them before you start putting it together. Or you end up trying to hold everything into place and unwind them first before tightening them up. It's a bit of a pain. And this bottom one, so that's usually where you have your sampling port. <laughs> So that there's the basic setup for a bucket fermenter. So just to go over that, this is the lid you get with the basic brew bucket. It has one port and it comes with your blow off tube fitting. And the fitting here is a newer update. The older models had a hole where they have a weldless fitting for the thermo well. Now they've upgraded to a tri clamp. So you can just about put whatever you like there. But usually the thermo well goes there in the middle and that's included with the basic kit. What is different, which I don't have here to show you, is they do have a different valve. You don't get this valve with the basic brew bucket. You get a little ball valve with a blue handle I'll put on the screen. And in the back end of that ball valve, you can fit one of these uh, racking arm pickup tubes and you can configure that however you like. And with the Nano X basic bucket setup, you get the feet, you don't get the wheels that I have on here now. But the benefit of starting with a system like this, if you can't afford all the pressure fittings at once, you can buy this basic setup and slowly build onto it and onto it until you're all the way up to the pressure fitting if that's what you're after. 
So right now on the Cheeky Peak website, there's three different versions of the 30 litre. There's the flexi bucket, and then it steps up sort of halfway between a uni tank, a full uni tank, and the flexi bucket, and then you're right up to the full uni tank setup. I've got bits and pieces here and extra bits and pieces. Uh, so just make sure if you are ordering one that you pick the right one and just check all the parts lists and the right parts are there that you want. I'm gonna add a few on now and show a few different configurations and we'll just have a closer look. So this is the pressure lid. It has three one and a half inch ports and one three inch port. Seal there, it's in place in this setup, so that's good. Don't have to muck, muck around with it. And you put the band on. A lot of these parts are optional. Normally you'd just get an end cap for the top there, but I have a glycol system, so I can use the chilling coil. Now you don't even need a glycol system for a chilling coil. You can set up really cold water in a freezer. You can set up your own glycol in a freezer. There's all sorts of ways you can do it. So I'm gonna put this in the top. Oops, make sure you leave the uh, seal in place. I might want to turn it away from these other ports. Always keep in mind when you're doing up tri clamps too, where you're going to have the little closing screw, because that can get in the way of things too if you put it in the wrong spot. So that's my chilling coil. Of course you don't need that, you can also put this in the fridge. The pressure kit at least comes with a floating pickup tube, which you can cut to size. Yeah, that's going to be a bit too long, I'll cut that to size later. When you've put your disconnects in the lid, Again, of course, under the lid and then attach your floating pickup tube, of course. I have two here. That's one for beer and that one for gas. You might want to move them around. You might want the beer one at the front. You might want the gas one at the side. And this last port, a pressure relief valve, very important. These units are rated to 15 PSI, which is plenty. Now these are connections and disconnects for the glycol or your cooling system. They screw into there. And that seal must be just to try and stop any leaks. You can take these off. Yeah. And then you can use this to connect your glycol lines with these quick disconnects. Very handy. Just like that shoot them off however you want. And so here's a closer look at the lid and how I've set it up. There's many different configurations. That's a closer look at the, that's a pressure relief valve. That's a simple beer post that I have the floating dip tube attached to. And that is just a gas post, a normal gas post. The glycol system in the middle I've also got the diaphragm pressure gauge. Uh, I'm unsure whether that could go below liquid level. I think it can. Most diaphragm gauges are made that way, but it might not be quite as accurate. So if I want to put that on top, I've kind of run out of ports. But what I'm going to do myself is get a T-piece and maybe put the PRV and the gauge on the T-piece. Or you can mix it up however you like. We'll have a closer look at that later. I'm going to take this other valve off and once you step up in the models you can get this valve and viewing sort of port all in one piece that they do a lot of things with. I'll show you. They usually add it to the bottom port here and they'll add your racking arm in there however whatever configuration you want it, you can have it poking up. It's not one that you can turn while it's in there. You could try and loosen this off a little bit, but if you get full of beer, it might be a bit of a worry. So you set that up how you want it first. You might not want to use it at all. So 
So I hope that's clear enough. Right at the moment, that's open. So if this had you know, liquid in it, of course, it'd come pouring out. So during the ferment, you might have that closed or you might have a cap on there, a proper one, not one of these plastic ones, and you might leave it open. Or you could actually turn it around the other way. And so you had the tap and you could always see the beer in there. It's not very practical that way though, because what you can do when it's this way, so you might have a cap on there for safety purposes, just in case you forget and open that up. But what you could do later, say you wanted to carbonate, they have a carb stone fitting. So you could attach that in there, like that. Of course, via a seal and a tri-clamp, I won't put it on right now. And you'd flush it, flush some CO2 through, you could leave it open a bit, flush some CO2 through, close it up. Then you can open there and you can actually carbonate your beer from there. And it happened fast because you're using an air stone, CO2 stone. <laughs> Another one of their fittings is, it goes straight to a beer line. So you'd connect that to the bottom. You'd open up that tap with some pressure in it and you'd push beer out of this line to get the oxygen out of the line. Then you could hook that up to your keg and fill your keg from there. And you can see what's going into your keg. You could as well add that little valve tap on there as well. If that was your want. They've also supplied me with this pigtail uh, sample collector, I guess you'd call it, which can fit on the end of this tap here. Like that. And that just makes it easier to take samples when you're under pressure and carbonated. It won't foam up as much. That's another optional extra. I might just take this off to get it out of the way. Just so we can see this a bit clearer. We take that off. We could put this valve on here if we wanted to. And from that valve, go into any sort of other configuration. You could go into an elbow and then you could go into this. That way, if you were draining the yeast, you can see through that port there, when you're starting to get wort out. Although, if you have a hose on the end, you can usually start seeing <laughs> when you're getting wort out the hose too. There's a lot of different ways. On my other systems, I've set the bottom of these style of fermenters up in so many different ways. It's not funny. Another way, you might put the elbow on there first and not worry about the valve up there. Then, of course, you could stick that on there if you wanted to. Either way around, it doesn't really matter. Depends on what you want to set up. You can have another extension, then you can have that on the end. The world's your oyster. For me, one of the easiest ways, well, I did start using setups like that and I stopped. And I went just to having a valve with one of these on top. This is a different size valve. That's a two inch port. So you'd have to either get an adapter or a different lid. And that for me is one of the most simple ways of doing it. That way you don't have to run off yeast, you know, through hoses and things. And there's a litre volume down here and that's usually more than enough to collect a single batch of yeast in just about any beer. You're very lucky to ever fill this up with yeast. It's probably in a half full, three quarters full from one batch of beer. And that just makes it really easy. So you have the valve, you have that open the valve during the ferment, and then you close it off and take the yeast away. 
then you can dry hop without the yeast there. I find that a very clean way of doing it. There might be a little bit more waste, but then you could also waste a lot more depending on all the different fittings you have set up. If you've got elbows and all sorts of things coming out here, you might waste even more. I find this very simple. So here's another configuration where I've put the sample port up here. I can show you the pigtail fitting a little bit better. That just screws on like that. And I suppose you could compare that to, you know, a long line from a keg to stop you getting so much foam when it's carbonated and under high pressure. And it's just controlled by the valve on the tap here. Now, I don't have a fitting for the two inch port at the moment. I could probably fit some sort of hop contraption on there if I wanted to, or there is talk in the future of maybe an element in there. So you've got the cooling and the heating. That's something to see in the future. I did look into a clear port for here, like an observation port. I had to import one, I didn't, couldn't find one locally, and they're quite expensive, but they are pressure rated, so that's something you could think of. Of course, when you've got glass like this, you need to keep the light off them when they're fermenting and after fermenting. There's just so many combinations you can make. That's one of the benefits of systems like this. It's really up to you what you do with it. So there you go. That is the Cheeky Peak Nano X 30 litre bucket uni tank fermenter something like that <laughs> you'll find it on their website big thank you goes out to cheeky peak i can't wait to give it a go they do talk about passivation uh, on their website you can read through that if you like but uh, in australia at least um, the citric acid that is barkeeper's friend as long as you've got the australian version uh, is safe for the inside give it a scrub let it dry and you're passivated give everything a really good scrub you can get big greases and things on them so a big thank you goes out to Cheeky Peak again for supplying this unit. Thank you very much. I can't wait to use it. Versatile. Uh, there's not many that are any more versatile than this one, that's for sure. Not that I've seen anyway. Thanks to my viewers, my subscribers. Like the video. It really, really helps. Share. And a big thank you to my patrons. Because without them, these videos couldn't happen. There's easy over 100 extra videos on my Patreon so far. Most of them is just me yakking, but there's also longer brew days. There's also longer unpacking boxes of this unit up already.